Hey Vikes, welcome back to the last episode of Sagas for this school year. I'm Regan Bond, your host. The theme for this show is creativity. Students tend to have creativity in clubs and electives. In this show, we will be exploring a graduate who built a company, the new CNC machine, a new student-run magazine, and lastly, a former Seaman basketball star pursuing his dream in music. For our first story, I chatted with Austin Wright, a 1996 graduate. In high school, Austin wasn't your typical nerdy kid, but as time went on, he found love for drone racing, which was the start of his idea for his business. Austin Wright, a Seaman High graduate, has had many odd jobs, from being in the Army to a stand-up comedian and now an entrepreneur. His love for drone racing is what led him to his latest project. The experience, FPV, which stands for First Person View, um, and essentially what we started doing is I had the idea to take the components off of the drones, uh, which basically is just a video transmitter and a tiny little camera about the size of your thumb. Uh, and then there's goggles involved, the first person view goggles that kind of look like, um, oh, like virtual reality goggles, for lack of a better term. Um, and so basically I took the components off of the drones and started putting them on the local hockey team's helmets. FPX is currently working with the Topeka Pilots, the hockey team, to launch their product. It was downtown Kansas Avenue and it was a really rainy, crummy day. We were down there, my store was down there, Adrenaline Racing, uh, setting up a little booth for kids to come learn how to fly drones, basically. Uh, we were putting goggles on kids and then we'd fly them down the street and back and, you know, basically I was there trying to sell drones, right? Uh, but it was an educational day, a science day for kids. Um, this 25-year-old, I call him a kid, but this kid walks up to me and he said, hey, I work for the Topeka Pilots. Um, this is really cool technology. So I put the goggles on and flew them around. He's like, man, this is really awesome. And I was like, hey, you said you work for the pilots. I've been trying to contact you guys. Uh, I'd like to get my um, camera on your helmets just to show you what this might look like. And he was like, man, that's an amazing idea. They are also looking to work with other sports such as football, baseball, golf, NASCAR, and many other sports and activities. Launching this in hockey seemed like the perfect sport um, to, to, go, to go on. And then uh, meeting the NAHL through the Topeka Pilots, um, that's when they were like, we want this on every referee at every game. This would be great for coaching and training the referees as well. Um, and so it all started out in hockey. Now we're about to go into NAHL, the ECHL, the NHL, um, all these hockey leagues. And I started saying at the beginning, this can be used in so many different sports and so many different you know, cool areas. Austin has shown that one crazy idea has been able to turn his dream into a reality. I implore people, you know, when you're as crazy as I am and you have these ideas, don't stop at the idea. Contact somebody and let them know. Austin hopes to find a company that wants to buy out his idea. In the future, they hope they can take their invention to the Olympics. Our next story is about the new CNC machine in the wood shop. Devin Applehands is an independent study for Mr. Wilson's class. He has made multiple projects on the CNC machine. So with CNC router, we can draw up different things on Aspire. That's the program we're using here. Uh, you can do 3D modeling. We have made little drill holders and stuff with cutting out separate pieces. We've done different projects for a couple of teachers and stuff. We can cut straight through pieces of wood and fill them with epoxy and put lights behind them and they make kind of like little lamps. You can cut out signs and then paint the inside of what you cut it out to make it something you can hang on a wall or in your living room or something like that. You can really cut out anything you want as long as you can draw it up. There's a CAD class which you might do some stuff with. I'm in an independent study so I work on this stuff in an independent study. So that's our new CNC machine that we've been working with, called a ShopBot. Zach Bloom and Julian Stahlbomber, we put it all together. It came in a whole bunch of different pieces and we assembled it all. The program we use is Aspire, so you have to know how to work that. And then knowing how to work with wood a little bit, you have to know how to set things up on that. This is a 3D modeling scene I've been working on. We have to put in all the different pieces. Once we put them in, we have to adjust the depths of them, different things like that. Adjust which textures we want, because like when you put a piece on top of another, it'll try to put, like mesh the textures together so it'll look all funny. But you have to take all that apart so they have the right things on top. So this is 11 inches tall by 44 inches wide. In order to cut this, we use different tool paths. Like there's a roughing tool path, which is this, which takes off most of the material so we can get down to the finer details. And then we use a finishing tool path that uses a smaller bit that's rounded to get all the 3D parts of the wood to come out. And this will be what it looks like when it's done. 
if you make that on a big nice piece of like slab of oak or walnut it'd look really good and you could sell it. I enjoy doing stuff like this but I don't know if that'll be in my future or not. If you are interested in working with the CNC machine, make sure to take Mr. Wilson's CAD class. The last story we have is over the Radley Oast. Mr. Collins and the other English teachers have created a student-led creative submission magazine. Radley Oast is the school's literary magazine and uh, when I first came here three years ago I expressed an interest in reviving the literary magazine. And so this semester I had two students, Luke McCune and Meredith Lewis, who were taking creative writing for the second time and kind of created a creative writing two class. And the two of them serve as editors. There's Luke McCune, who's the overall editor, and Meredith is the art editor. I work with writings and poems and all that stuff. I read through it and I like edit it, like mark it up, see if it goes in or not and all that stuff. I'm the arts director, so anyone who has an art piece, they will give it to me and I will decide whether or not it gets to be in the magazine. It was put together mainly by me and Meredith. Collins came up to us and talked to us. He wanted to start a new one because he ha had one at his old school and Seaman had one about five years ago and then it went away. And so he wanted to start it again and make it something better and new. In a writing standpoint, just getting your work out there is like the best thing you can do getting everyone to see it, then having it with like other students, all your peers work as well. It really helps with just creating. One of my students, Gabby Brown, wrote a, a, a short story called Hope that uh, kind of like um, takes fantasy and combines it uh, and did a really nice job with that. Uh, it's called Hope. It's about like these hybrid people. So I like a dystopian where humans and hybrids, they live together, but somehow, like, the hybrids are, I guess how you could say, like, the lower class people, they're not treated the same, they're treated horribly. They wear shot collars, like, that are controlled by the police, and, like, people will guilt them to doing what they want. It's gotten me more into writing, because at first I wasn't very good at it, and I didn't really like doing it. But now I've gotten more into, I want to write more about it and get more into writing than I was. And uh, a lot of times what students um, have to think about the world around them is lost. It's important for students to, to share their writing uh, and to write. Number one, it's a sign of the times and it's a great way, um, uh, number one, to find out what your thoughts are because basically writing is thinking but it's put down graphically on paper or on the computer sc screen. Uh, number two, um, I think students have strong ideas that need to be shared. And this is one way to uh, share what it is that uh, you think in a creative form. Make sure to enter your stories into the Radley Oast boxes around the school. For our last story, we talked to Josiah Hazim about his passion for music. Um, I'm in music just because like, it makes me happy, really. Like, that's what I like. like I'm able to kind of like put what I'm thinking yeah, yeah. into it. And I like the sounds and everything. Call my mama on the phone, I said I'm gonna find a way. She said, son, you're gonna get it, promise there'll be better days. Remember all the times I sat back, I was down, I had a prayer. I've always liked music, like, I feel like, I feel like an artist who like really made me like 
wanted to do it was Wiz Khalifa. Like when Wiz like first came up, I was like in seventh, eighth grade, mm -hmm. and like I just thought like his whole wave and everything was so cool. Like I wanted to be like that. Yeah, like around eighth grade, I made my first song. I didn't actually record a song till like my junior year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Josiah graduated from Seaman three years ago. If you knew him then, it was probably for being one of the best on the basketball team. Now, a few years later, his hobby switched to music. Yeah. Um, yeah, I went to school. I was playing college basketball. Um, there was a lot going on. Like, I feel like I just, I feel like when I first went to college, I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And I was like, I had my hands like in a lot of different baskets. I was trying to do a lot of different things. And then I just finally just kind of realized like it wasn't what I wanted to do. Like, I'd rather just focus on life and like, chase the things I really want to chase. And basketball definitely wasn't it. I'm not going to be playing pro, so. Right now, like, music, and that's where, like, a lot of people, like, get confused. Like, I'm, you know, I still go to school, I work, you know, but music, like, that's, you know, I want to do it. So if I could do music full time, you know, I love to. And, like, I like just, like, working with people who kind of feel the same way, like, artistic people. With a lot of options available for him, he had to make a choice. He knew whatever he chose, his family and friends would support him. Yeah, yeah, my mom loves my music. See, my mom plays my music in the car all the time. Um, I mean, when I first started making music, like some people, like if they think that that's all you're gonna do. Uh, honestly, like I always like making music and I used to like write songs and stuff. And like, I feel like around like nine, 10, even like a little bit later, like even after when I first started, like started recording, I kind of felt like I didn't want to put music out or record stuff because people would look at me a certain way, mm -hmm. you know, cause like, oh, you're a rapper, you're, you know, you're a rapper, you're this, you're that, you know? So that kind of, that kind of held me back a little bit, but I just got to the point where like, I just want to do what I want to do, so. Making music comes with a lot of steps to make a good song. Burgess, an artist and engineer, helps Josiah with some of his music. Honestly, uh, it just takes a lot of like tinkering with sounds and really working your way around a, a sound software. So I got Fruity Loops and I've been using it since uh, eighth grade. I started making beats in eighth grade. And just from there, learning how different plugins work and how to mix and master. I mean, there's a lot of aspects to it. And like me, I'm more of an artist, Like, but I eventually want to become you know, like a full, like I'd love to be able to, you know, I engineer some, but you know, there's a lot that goes into it, producing, you know, making beats and then, you know, being able to engineer, like get the sounds you want. Me, me more so, I'm like an artist, I like building stuff. So like, it's, you know, like instead of going and like building something, I'd rather build like a piece of art music. Really, I mean, at first, like it used to be, you know, like I'd love to be able to like travel and really like do music full time. But like I've came to like I really just love music for what it is, so I feel like I'll never stop regardless. Like I want to be able to you know have my own music. Yeah, it lives um, forever. Anything else you want to add to this? Um, anything you want to say? Chase your dreams. Um, really, yeah. Don't let anybody like decide what you want to do. Like, you do what you want to do, and whatever you want to do, you can be great at it. That's my daddy. It came to me. Rockin' his under nice jeans on me. Hey, let's go, let's go. Do you believe in me? What do you see in me? What do you see in me? Don't go to church, got a Jesus peace. Why would I hug out a key? Josiah plans to make this his future career, and we encourage you to check out his music. Thanks for watching Sagas this school year. We will be back next year.